Hey, Sam. <laughs> well, hello, Susie. What's new? Well, I got that new job I was telling you about down at the plant. I'm going to be working on the line with pneumatic and hydraulic tools. Is there any advice you can give me when using these type of instruments? Well, Susie, as you already know, any tool should only be used for the job that it was designed for. And you should always be aware of the hazards of the tools that you will be using. Each tool has particular capabilities, limitations, and hazards. Now, I'm sure you will be trained on how to use each tool safely and properly before your manager issues each tool. Now, your training should include the safe operation as well as the hazards of the tool. You should also know the tool's actions and power supply, such as hydraulic and pneumatic functions before operating them. Well, of course, you need to know what protections are built into the tool and what protection you need to have against hazards during operation. And as always, maintain the tool. Tools must be in good condition to perform well and produce quality work. What does OSHA say about pneumatic and hydraulic tools? Well, hydraulic and pneumatic tools are touched upon through various OSHA standards. Although, as you know, Susie, if a situation or item is not specifically covered by an OSHA standard, it does not mean it is not covered. OSHA 29 CFR 1910.147, which covers the control of hazardous energy, identifies pneumatic and hydraulic as an energy source and fall under the lockout-tagout standard. Energy sources can be electrical, mechanical, hydraulic, pneumatic, chemical, thermal, or energized components. And um, what does ANSI say about pneumatic and hydraulic? Since they are a form of stored energy sources, both OSHA and ANSI, the American National Standards Institute, are quick to remind us of the hazards associated with stored energy and bursting safety. Bursting safety? <laughs> well, it says right here, ANSI standard A92.2-98-1969, it says, Hydraulic and pneumatic tools and the components could fall under the bursting safety factor. You know, all critical and pneumatic components shall comply with the provisions of this standard. Shouldn't the tool is going to be used when using hydraulics and pneumatics? Well, as a matter of fact, yes. A tool retainer should be installed on each piece of equipment which, without such a retainer, may eject the tool. In the use of hydraulic and pneumatic tools, tremendous pressure can be generated within the internals of the tools as well as the supply line. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So, what are some hydraulic highlights I should review before using these type of tools, Sam? You know, I thought you'd never ask, Susie. <laughs> Remember, hydraulic tools are very sensitive to dirt. Dirty hydraulic tools will eventually fail. Ensure that all hydraulic fluids meet the manufacturer's recommendations. The wrong fluid type can cause failure. Hydraulic hoses must also be made to manufacturer's specifications. Hoses that are not designed for hydraulic uses cannot take the pressure and will easily blow apart, causing potentially serious injuries. Hydraulic fittings must be designed for usage in hydraulic tools. Normal fittings cannot take the extreme pressures of hydraulics. And finally, the tool with all of its components must be designed for hydraulic usage. And some safety strategies to keep in mind when using pneumatic tools? Well, remember that pneumatic tools are air-powered tools. Just like hydraulic tools, pneumatic tools must be kept clean and in good repair. Air that is used to drive these tools can contain moisture. Now, if pneumatic tools are not properly lubricated with the proper oil, Internal rust can build up and cause premature failure. Pneumatic tools are designed for extremely high torque, impact, and heavy usage. Well, what if I can get the job done with a hand tool? <laughs> oh, never. Never substitute a manual hand tool component when the design calls for a pneumatic tool. Now, for example, sockets for hand wrenches are not strong enough for power tools such as pneumatic impact wrenches. <laughs> Yeah, but what about the tremendous pressure build-up factor when using pneumatic and hydraulic tools? Hoses and hose connections used for conducting compressed air to equipment should be designed for the pressure and service to which they are subjected. What are some safety considerations pertaining to pneumatic and hydraulic hose lines? Well, it's extremely important that the proper disposal of damaged hydraulic and pneumatic hoses are discarded for everyone's protection. Damaged hoses or connections should be tagged and set aside for management evaluation or other similar company policies on damaged equipment. If a hose is not safe for industrial use, 
It cannot be safe for home use either. Hoses should be inspected and replaced at manufacturer's recommendation. Ruptured hydraulic hoses, spraying hydraulic fluid, is an excellent fuel source for fires and should never be allowed in the workplace. Are there any other safety considerations we overlook pertaining to any job? Well, of course. Don't overlook wearing your personal protective equipment while working with pneumatics and hydraulics. You know, wearing goggles, face shield, earplugs, or earmuffs for grinding, chipping, hammering, shearing, or any other similar type work should be considered. Now, OSHA requires wearing metatarsal guards as well for some operations. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be a real challenge working with pneumatic and hydraulic tools on a new job, Sam. Susie, remember, there are tremendous advantages to having pneumatic and hydraulic tools, but like all tools, they have limitations. Know how to use them. Follow all manufacturers' recommendations and take care of them, and you will have a safe and productive aid to your work practices. Considering the energy power pneumatic and hydraulic tools have, if you abuse them or shortcut safe work practices, you can expose yourself and others around you to an unforeseen danger. Remember that hydraulic and pneumatic tools and their components are not interchangeable. Hydraulics operate on fluid pressure, while pneumatics operate on compressed air pressure. Thanks for the tip, Sam. I think I'll take an extra pair of safety glasses so I can spot any unforeseen supervisors down at the plant. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Susie. Here you go. No, 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 no. This is done now. Because safety is my business. Uh, you make it yours, too, hmm? <laughs> I will. See you around, Sam. <laughs> okay, Susie. See you later. We've shown a variety of workplaces and situations this month. We'd like to remind you that each workplace is different. Be sure to wear the personal protective equipment that's right for your job. For more information about Safety Watch, give us a call at 800-440-0377. From all of us here at Safety Watch, work smart, stay safe. And thank you for watching.